Another budget amp up for testing? Trust me though, you want to see this one. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Hustle lot, hustle every single day. I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave. Taking it way back to the early 1990s, Stinger Electronics had very few products they offered, including interconnect cables called the Queen Series. It's really all they had for 1991 year. 92, they did expand their product offering some and had some battery accessories, some cable, some distribution blocks, things like that. Over the years, they've expanded their product offerings, and most recently, this budget line of amplifiers called the MT series, including 700, 1000, 1500, and 2000 watt monoblock versions. Today, we're going to look at the 1000 watt version which currently on Amazon is $120 for a 1,000 watt amp from a well-known company? Hmm. Let's take one out of the box and take a closer look and find out what it's all about. Including the box here, the owner's manual for the MT series, which currently includes four models, 700, 1000, 1500, and 2000 watt, all mono blocks. I was told they will have four channels coming out soon. A system tuning guide, also a troubleshooting guide, very useful for figuring out what's wrong with your amp. Also a power certificate, which gives us some numbers here, and we're going to compare that to what we received on the amp dyno. We also have Allen's keys, some mounting screws, and a little L bracket. I'll show you what that's for. It's actually for the base remote. I didn't even notice this in the beginning until I saw the pictures of the amp. I'm like, where is the other part of the base remote? So this allows you to mount it in the car very easily. And speaking of base remote, here is the base remote. It's on a telephone style connection, so it stays well into the amp. And yeah, it's just a, basically a potentiometer, not a whole lot else to it. There is no indicators, no clipping indicators, anything like that unfortunately. So I'm going to show you here how you have to assemble this. Probably easiest to mount the bracket in the car first and then you mount the um, base knob to that. Again, nothing fancy, just a potentiometer base remote. Allow you to adjust your base level and at least it does come with an inexpensive amp like this, so you got to say that. Also, here is the amplifier and of course we have do not eat silica gel. And this is nonsense. And here is the star of the show, the Stinger Audio MT1000.1 amplifier. Nothing too fancy going on here. It actually looks really basic. Just has the logo there on the top. And yeah, it's black in color. Very basic. Not much going on. But let's look at one end of the amp. You can see here we have protect and power LEDs. The remote there for the base remote. We have inputs. And also bridge out. This amp is strappable. Then we have a gain control, low pass filter, variable subsonic variable frequency and also variable bass boost which is nice i've talked about that before if you're going to have bass boost it's nice to have the variable frequency on the opposite side four gauge for power and ground we have the remote terminal we have dual outputs for speakers as well which is always nice on a mono block because it gives you the ability to hook up dual voice coil subwoofers or multiple subwoofers very easily so we always appreciate having that their eight gauge there for the speaker outputs and we'll do a quick fly over here of the amp. Again, you can see very basic, not a lot going on, but uh, hey, if it works good, then it doesn't matter. Now, later in the video, we will check out the guts, but for now, let's check out the ratings. 1,000 watts at 1 ohm, 700 watts at 2 ohms, 400 watts at 4 ohms, or 1,800 watts if you link two of these together. Dimension-wise, 9 inches length, 6.1 inches width, 2.1 height. Again, very compact amplifier. As usual, get out our testing machine here, the amplifier dyno, and find out what kind of power we get. On the left, you'll see power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm low, the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp indicator so that we can calculate amplifier efficiency. This here's my favorite part. First test will run is four ohms mono. It's rated 400 watts at 14.4 volts. We'll try to keep it as close as we can to 14.4. Certified test first 1% distortion. 505 watts at 14.34 so easily does its rated power plus more 
uncertified up to the clipping point, 40 hertz tone. See what we get here. Very close, 511 at 14.37. Then we'll set up the dyno here for the dynamic test, which sends a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amp. And you can see all these tests are pretty close together. 509, 14.36. Now let's check that efficiency at four ohms. Very, very good, 93%. So we're liking that a whole lot. Now let's try two ohms where it's rated 700 watts. And again, certified test first, a 1% distortion. And easily 700, we got 810 at 14.24. Again, we'll reset the dyno here for the uncertified test up to clipping point. See what we get. A little bit more, 844 at 14 volts. Lastly here, the dynamic test, 40 hertz pulse tone. Oh yeah, look at that, it jumped over 900. <laughs> 945 at 14.48. Again, let's check the efficiency though, see how that is. Oh, we're still really good, almost 90%, 88% efficient at two ohms. One ohm mono, the amp is rated 1000 watts. And again, at the current price around $120, if it does anywhere near this, look at this, 1146 watts at 13.93. So easily does the rated power plus some more. Uncertified up to the clipping point. You're over 1200, 1229, 13.69. We did let the voltage drop a little bit because it was doing its rated power. So I figured, hey, this would give you an accurate indication of kind of your car because you're gonna drop voltage in your car as well. Dynamic 1600 and 66 watts, 13.14.32. Efficiency 76, so we're close to 80% still at one ohm. I'm loving this. Here's a snapshot of all the results, including eight ohms, which I didn't show you. You can see all the different results here. Pause it if you wanna see more. Now next up, we're gonna hook up the quad box and find out how this 1000 watt amp powers the quad box. Now we'll give you my thoughts. Okay, it's really difficult to tell in the video, but this amp was powering this quad box to the max. It was crazy. The garage door was shaking more than it's shaking in a while. Stuff was falling off the cabinet. Stuff was falling off the shelves everywhere. I was like, no way this little amp is doing all this. So I'm super impressed with the fact that not only does this power, but man, it sounds crazy good. So hopefully you can hear me over the bass, but I've got the uh, knob turned all the way down and still getting quite a bit of bass. So that is the one negative I would say. They don't have probably the right size uh, resistor in here or something because it goes from loud to obscenely loud. And you're hearing the door rattle, but oh my gosh, this thing, this little amp, this is it. This little amp right here is making all that noise. Yo! After the amp test, we did the course of Predator look here using the FLIR. You can see around 210 degrees there on that output inductor. Now let's find out what's inside this compact class. These nuts. <laughs> this is not Dick Riculous. Now we'll take the six screws off the bottom of the amp here so we can get inside and see what it's all about. And here we go. Class D. Monoblock amplifier, engineered in the USA, so I asked them, what's that mean? It is engineered by Mark Chow, former RE audio engineer. So yeah, Mark, you did a great job. Because <laughs> this amp is not only small, but it sounds great on the subs and does its power. 2200 microfarad, 80 volts on the rails, there's four of them. 2200 microfarad, 35 volts for the input filtering. And overall, very nice, I was super impressed with this amp. Now let's talk about the pros and cons. There's a lot more pros and cons, but here we go. Small footprint, rated power plus, insanely low pricing at the time of this video. 
It is available online and on Amazon. I'll leave a link below. Variable subsonic, variable bass boost, and frequency. Bass remote is included at this price, which is crazy. It is strappable, and the efficiency was super high, and I didn't say the sound quality, though, but it sounded great with the subs. Next up, standard RCAs, of course, on a cheap amp. Bass remote features were very slim. The bass remote level, it didn't turn all the way down. Plain looks, but stop complaining and go get one of these. Man, and Stinger didn't pay me to say that. They didn't even send me the amp. I bought it myself because I just wanted to try it out. I've been hearing good things about these, and yes, I'm impressed. I would say great value, insanely low price. If you need a cheap bass amp or need something for somebody that you know, check these out. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. If you know, then you know to stick around to the end. Let's try certified at 0.8. Yes, 1276 watts at 14.18 and handled 0.8, no problem. Let's try dynamic and see what it does. Dynamically at 0.8 ohms. And here we go, 40 hertz burst. Check this out. Are we gonna get 19? Yes, 1930 watts at 14.2. Amp is not recommended for under one ohm loads, just so you know. But we did try 0.67 dynamic and it went into protect, but it came right back out. Nice protection circuit, nice power. Check link in the video description. Go buy one.